Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. So this is an introduction to the symbolic math toolbox and we'll be learning about the symbolic math toolbox in this video. So the references are the control systems engineering 6th edition book and the book you are following in your course. The objectives are to learn to use MATLAB and the symbolic math toolbox to find Laplace transforms for the time functions find the time functions for Laplace transforms to create the LTI transfer functions from symbolic transfer functions and perform solutions of symbolic simultaneous equations. The required softwares are MATLAB, the symbolic math toolbox and the control system toolbox. We'll learn to use these toolboxes in this given video. So uh, here's a discussion on symbolic math toolbox which tells that it provides functions for solving, plotting and manipulating symbolic mathematical equations and you can create, run and share symbolic math code using the MATLAB live editor. So basically uh, what is symbolic math toolbox? It's basically uh, the toolbox that allows you to use symbols like uh, S, X, F, B, A, any of the symbols from A to Z or any other that you may name in your equations and then you can uh, solve your equations using those symbols. Sometimes you need to write A square plus B square plus C square but MATLAB says that undefined variable so if you don't want to initialize those A, B and C as variables and you want them to remain as symbols you declare them to be symbols in MATLAB and then MATLAB solves those symbols for you. In this lab we need S and T, the S domain and the time domain symbols for our symbolic math toolbox and this is because we are dealing with transfer functions and in the transfer functions we are at most of the times dealing with S domain. So S is the symbol that's required by us so let's see it also says that you can share your symbolic worth, uh, work with other MATLAB users as live scripts or convert them to HTML or PDF for publication you can generate MATLAB functions, simulink function blocks and simscape equations directly from symbolic expressions the commands that we will be using are sims, laplace I Laplace determinant and these commands will be used in our lab so these are the pre-lab tasks and these do not need to be included in the lab report because these are the pre-lab tasks these are not the lab tasks the lab tasks are derived from these tasks but you don't need to perform a hand calculation to do all of this you need to perform the lab tasks so the first task, the task says use MATLAB and symbolic math toolbox to generate symbolically the time function f of t shown in pre-lab 1. Now let's have a look. This is the f of t that has been shown in pre-lab 1. So let's start by using symbolic math toolbox. Here's MATLAB in front of you. So I just want to show you what's the symbolic math toolbox and how do we use it. So I'll write S Y M S. Um, let's forget it. I'll just write X is equal to 2 static A plus B. Okay. So now I enter it and you can see that it says undefined function or variable A it says it's undefined so let's do something sims a and b okay so i have declared a and b as symbols i'll press enter okay so a and b have been declared as symbols now i'll write the equation again x is equal to 2 static a plus b and you can see that the same equation which was not being stored um, earlier is now being stored in x as, as 2a plus b. So how did it become possible? 
It's because of the symbolic map toolbox where we declared the symbols A and B. Now we are going to declare S and T as our symbols to declare this equation in MATLAB. So I'll just declare some part of it 0 0.0075 minus 0 0.0034 exponent minus 2.5 t into cos of 22 t let's declare something sims s and t this means that i'll be using symbol s and t in our in my equation and you can see here that a value a symbol has been declared for each of the a b s t x where x a b c all i've declared to be symbols and one more thing because a and b both are symbols and i have declared them um, in, in, a, in an equation equal to b x so x is also declared here as a symbol so so now we have declared s and t as symbols in matlab now what we'll do is that we'll create an equation create uh, which includes the time domain or the s domain so I declared an equation which has been given to us as f now you don't need to write this f of t because it's just a symbolic representation in your uh, paperwork which represents that f is the equation in time domain so you don't just don't need to write this t in brackets you'll just place f and then an equal to now for example uh, I don't remember the equation exactly so I'll create an exemplary equation for you as 0 0.0075 and then I'll write 0 0.5 now if I need to multiply t over here I'll write t as a multiplication you, you can see that I have included a static uh, symbol over here so whenever you have to multiply something in MATLAB you will place a static sign over here so that's something really important that if you'll write simply 0.5t then it would not include uh, or comprehend uh, that t is a variable that's being multiplied with 0.5 so you need to multiply static with t so, so that MATLAB understands that 0.5 is being multiplied with t the next thing we'll go to write is exponent and here we are going to write 5 static t so you can see that exponent means e to the power so we don't write it like exponent to the power no that's not the right way it's like exp and then exponent is a function in MATLAB and you mention it like the way I've mentioned it over here and this would in fact result in e raised to power 5t so let's just enter it and see what happens you can see the equation has been declared and stored in f now if we want to see a better version of it we'll write pretty and f what does the pretty command do it's just t into e raised to power 5t and then we have divided it by 2 because it's 0.5 over here and 0.0075 it writes it as 3 divided by 400 so now what we need to do is that we need to take the inverse Laplace or Laplace of equations so we have learned the sims method a symbolic math toolbox now what to do when you have to take Laplace or inverse Laplace of things so in order to take Laplace you should remember that the Laplace only happens with the t domain and the inverse Laplace happens with the applies to the s domain so we'll apply i l a p l a c Laplace to f and we'll enter it and the result is in front of you you can see that the f equation the equation that had been stored in f has been Laplace and the answer is in front of you who can again apply the pretty command to see the answer in a better way so here is the Laplace of uh, our required equation in front of you in similar way we can declare an equation in y 
which should which can be equal to 2 steric s plus 5 okay so this equation you can see that it is in s domain and now what we'll do is that we'll take inverse laplace of it and for in inverse laplace we write i l a p l a c e and then we write y in the brackets to get the inverse laplace you can see it gives me uh, 5 direct t 2 steric direct t so what is this direct t we'll see in pretty answer and we'll just enter it okay so it's nothing but a uh, direct function of t and uh, what is direct function you can see in the help section so direct is basically the delta function okay so that's something that I've done for you as an example that wherever you get stuck you can also write help and the uh, thing that thing variable or any function that you need help with you can simply write its name uh, ahead of help and it will tell you that what is direct what is the thing that you require so the direct is delta function over here now we have learned sims uh, we have learned Laplace we have learned inverse Laplace we have learned how to write equations so I guess these tasks are pretty much easier and task number A B C and D the thing that you need to find out is that how do you generate an LTI transfer function for your symbolic representation you should remember this thing that LTI transfer function or LTI domain is something different from the symbolic representation or the symbolic math toolbox so how do you convert between symbolic math toolbox and LTI linear time invariant systems you need to search this thing out for yourselves in uh, on internet or at any place and you will write reason for it and the method whatever you find and you will check yourselves that uh, is your method working or not on MATLAB then is that uh, last task which says that solve for the loop currents in prelab 3 and you can see here that uh, prelab C, uh, 3 says use a hand calculation to solve the circuit for the loop currents and here we have three loops and this needs to be done uh, solved using MATLAB so you can see in this figure that we have I1 I2 and I3 as we have a capacitor an inductor in the I3 loop uh, a inductor two inductors and a one capacitor in I2 loop and one capacitor and one inductor in I1 loop so it's pretty simple that the equations that would be formed will include s in our uh, equations now will include s so that's pretty much clear i guess you have done it already in your you know, uh, i guess matriculate or fsc classes that how to write these equations still uh, if you find any problem in writing these equations you can ask me and i'll be there to help you out uh, i can create an example for you where i can mention you that uh, if we write the equation for first uh, loop uh, and you know that we are going to write it using the KVL so what will happen is that uh, this resistance will be multiplied with the current that's flowing through it so 1 would be multiplied with I3 1 over 4F this is the capacitance so if you remember the capacitance has a reactant uh, the capacitor has a reactance of 1 over SC so 1 over s and c has the value of 1 over 4 so 1 over sc would be multiplied with i3 and then we'll multiply 2 with i3 minus i2 you should remember this thing that i3 is the current that's going to be dominant when you're writing the equation for this loop and i2 is going to be the dominant current when you are writing the equation for this loop so this equation will have I3 minus I2 into 2 and then for inductor we have reactance SL for capacitor we have reactance 1 over SC and for inductor we have inductance SL so what will be the uh, voltage rule over here I3 minus I2 into SL 
and L is basically the inductance which is 1 Henry over here then this would be 5 into I3 and uh, uh, 5 into I3 minus I1 and that's pretty much uh, the equation 1 uh, the equation for I3 and in the similar way you will write the equations for I1, I2 and I3 then when uh, you'll have these three equations you will solve this matrix you will solve for these currents using the Cramer's rule and what was the Cramer's rule the Cramer's rule was basically consisted on making determinants 3 cross 3 matrix would be there because we have a uh, 3 uh, three uh, uh, variables in this equation i1 i2 and i3 so we're, we are going to have a matrix and then uh, as you remember if you remember you should uh, revise your camera's rule and uh, I'll, I'll repeat that if you face any difficulty over here I'll be there to help you out but to just give you some hints uh, I would say that you have to replace the specific column of i1 I2 or I3 uh, with the output or the constant column if you are uh, doing it for uh, solving it for I1, I2 or I3 that you will have to replace the specific I1, I2, I3 column with the uh, uh, constant value column and the constant value column would have V of T in only one of the places and the other two would be zero because there are no constant values or voltage sources in this loop or in this loop only the loop number one which is I1 loop has the voltage source installed in it so we'll have only V of T in the I1 loop uh, or in other words if I say that you'll have a constant term in only one of the loops which is the I1 loop now uh, you can set the V of T value to be equal to 5 volts so that's a thing that can, I can ask you in your attendance criteria that what had I set the value for V of T so V of T I'm setting it to be 5 volts and you have solve it to uh, using the uh, Cramer's rule in the Cramer rule the most important thing is to take the determinants so the determinant can be taken using the DET command and I'll help you out with that if we can mention something I'll write, um, write a matrix over for you over here and it's 1 2 colon 3 4 colon means change of a row so you can see it over here that A it has been declared as a matrix with 1 2 in first row and 3 4 in the second row now in order to take the determinant I have written determinant of A and I'll just press enter and you can see that the determinant is minus 2 so that's pretty pretty much easy so you have to solve this last task using the Cramer's rule and you'll need determinant in your uh, practical so I guess these tasks have been uh, pretty much cleared out by me now you need to perform these tasks understand them perform them and if you fe uh, feel any uh, confusion or face any difficulty in performing them or in executing the commands or tasks you can ask me I'll be there inshallah take good care of yourselves uh, submit the reports in time uh, take care Allah Hafiz